One of the headlining aspects of SpaceX's Starship is its full reusability. Given Elon Musk's goal of environmental friendliness, reusability in a spacecraft isn't necessarily very new or hard to understand. After all, past examples include NASA's Space Shuttle, Gemini SC-2 capsule, and even SpaceX's own Dragon series. However, there are more than a few defining characteristics when it comes to full reusability for Starship. After all, there's a bit of a difference between full and partial reusability. Sort of like plastic being recyclable versus paper being recyclable. Take the space shuttle. Everything was reusable, excluding the massive external tank. The orbiter glid back to Earth like a gigantic glider, while the solid boosters fell into the ocean and were collected later. The Gemini SC-2 capsule was launched as part of the Gemini 2 mission, retrieved, then used again in a manned orbiting laboratory aboard OV-4-3 before being removed from service. As for the SpaceX Dragon and Dragon 2, they're also partially reusable. These crafts, the crew-occupied nose cones of many SpaceX rockets, are scooped up and reused after touchdown. However, excluding a few other crafts, parts, and tanks, that's about it. Most reusable spacecraft have been smaller vehicles or a massive and expensive project like the Space Shuttle. Plus, they're not entirely reusable, especially considering that these crafts are either retired after just a few launches or lose material every time they launch. So with that in mind, what exactly makes Starship fully reusable? The first aspect is that every part of Starship can be used more than once, obviously excluding the fuel. Remember, even the Space Shuttle, the usual comparison to Starship, isn't entirely reusable. Every time that vehicle launched, NASA expected to lose an external fuel tank. However, with Starship, there are no ands, ifs, or buts. Every part of the Starship is to be reusable, supposedly up to 2,000 times. That's thanks partly to its stainless steel construction, which can withstand re-entry heat of up to 1450 degrees Celsius. While that temperature is nearly 200 degrees below the upper re-entry temperature of 1650 degrees, SpaceX has a few more tricks to help Starship survive multiple launches. One of these would be the vehicle's re-entry methods, which slow Starship from over Mach 25 to zero by landing. So while Starship's stainless steel physically can't re-enter the Earth's atmosphere at top speeds without any assistance before melting, SpaceX has it covered. With heat increasing as Starship speeds into our planet's atmosphere, stainless steel sometimes won't cut it alone. However, ceramic tiles and stainless steel will. As a heads up, this part has some conflicting background information, as SpaceX has said that the tiles will be used for Starship while also saying they won't be. Nonetheless, the ship's body, made from stainless steel, can nearly survive the top heat from re-entry. However, Elon Musk has said that Starship will likely only travel at Mach 8 or 9, a fraction of SpaceX's official re-entry at Mach 25. Both references point in some form or another towards Starship having at least a few ceramic tiles built to cover just the most sensitive parts of the ship. Similar to virtually every other reusable spacecraft, i.e. the Space Shuttle, Starship utilizes heat tiles, but uniquely, SpaceX uses hexagonal ceramic heat tiles, likely in formations on Starship's nose and wing edges. These tiles are not only about three to 400 degrees more resistant to heat, but also withstand more significant heat that usually makes its way in between standard tiles. Alongside Starship's transpiring heat shield, SpaceX can repeatedly launch, then land, a ship through Earth's atmosphere. Speaking of which, this transpiring tech is considerably going to increase SpaceX's odds of repeatedly using a single Starship. According to a 2009 study by the German Aerospace Center, transpiration in a form similar to Starships can help bring down a vehicle's temperature significantly. While it's not an entirely comparable scenario, the scientists managed to bring a space vehicle's temperature down to just 25 Celsius from 1750 using transpiring water during a wind tunnel test. So while Starship isn't going to use water or have the same effect, the methane and liquid oxygen the ship uses can bring down re-entry temperatures. There's not a great comparison of just how much transpiration in the form of steel cooling can bring down temperatures. However, it's likely going to be enough to prevent Starship steel from getting anywhere near its melting point. Sure, while it's not the 25 Celsius recorded by the GAC, it doesn't need to be. The temperature needs to fall to a point in which it won't melt or warp whatsoever. Well, great. That sounds quite a bit more difficult than it likely is. However, with that in mind, it's pretty safe to say that SpaceX has the whole re-entry overheating problem covered. 
Again, this might not seem like a huge problem, but the temperatures at which Starship will have to go through would severely degrade another ship over time. However, that's not the only solution to a significant reusability issue. Ironically, there is another issue that's still along the lines of re-entry. This issue would be the actual landing of a ship, as it would be a bit difficult to reuse a Starship if it explodes on impact. Luckily, SpaceX has quite publicly proven it can reliably land a ship and its stages after a launch. For example, after falling beneath the 125-kilometer mark above the Earth's surface, Starship immediately begins using its control surfaces, made of two aft wings and two fins. These four surfaces help bring Starship's full speed down to something a bit more manageable before the ship tilts sideways and starts to fly like a plane or glider. Gliding down to about 20 kilometers, SpaceX then activates Starship's engines to reorient the ship before it slows to land at 250 meters. Then the ship slows down before another reusability method kicks in. This method would be utilizing Starship's incredibly underrated and relatively tiny landing legs. The six little flip-out legs extend outwards before landing, helping the ship survive the impact. It's much more complicated than that in the real world, but we'd need a bit longer than a YouTube video to cover the entire details. Well, and likely an advanced onboard computer, like the one aboard Starship. According to SpaceX's website, much of Starship's landing is accomplishable thanks to onboard processing and quick calculations. It's unimaginably difficult to land a rocket by hand, especially one as massive as Starship, and that's why it's not. Instead, SpaceX leaves that job to Starship itself. As the ship prepares to land, it uses its forward and aft flaps to slow down and adjust its angle. If these flaps are just slightly off or something doesn't activate as planned, then Starship will quickly end its mission as quickly as it began. Luckily, under active aerodynamic control, Starship's onboard flight computer led multiple prototypes to successful landings. Adjusting altitude and using precise positioning systems, Starship can quickly tell where, when, and how to adjust towards a proper landing. After the ships landed, nearby SpaceX employees put out any methane-related fires, and the company collects the ship. Then, they can reuse it. Fully. As Starship would have A. Survived the heat of re-entry with stainless steel and hexagon-shaped heat tiles. B. Successfully slowed down with forward and aft flaps. C. Adjusted its angle and glid towards its destination. D. Used a computer to align and activate the ship's six legs. E decelerated, and landed intact. And with that, the whole vehicle of Starship would be entirely usable for another launch. All SpaceX would have to do is collect the Super Heavy Booster, which would follow a similar process, perform any brief maintenance or cosmetic routines, and refuel. That means no need to craft any additional Starships, boosters, engines, rockets, or virtually anything other than some Methalox fuel. Speaking of Methalox, there is enough time to talk about one of Starship's more underrated features, Methalox. Of course, it should have been assumed with the lead-up, but nonetheless, Methalox is another benefit to SpaceX. Starship's proprietary liquid methane-liquid oxygen fuel pre-burner hybrid is a major plus to both Starship's efficiency and reusability. While there's a slightly higher chance for it to result in a minor fire at the base of a rocket upon landing, it's generally much better for a reusable ship. That's thanks to its high impulse, low danger, and high producibility. Compared to RP-1, the standard for rocket fuel, Methalox is much less toxic, carcinogenic, corrosive, and doesn't leave any potentially dangerous exhaust. That doesn't necessarily seem to be very beneficial for reusability, although it is. Over time, any corrosion or consistent burns can lead to serious damage or failure down the road. If it can avoid slow decay, constant maintenance, transport risks, and potential explosions with Methalox, it seems helpful in letting SpaceX reuse a Starship. Plus, it's easy to produce, and what's better for repeated use than something that companies can create quickly and that works repeatedly? So, knowing all this, what do you all think? SpaceX and Elon Musk have estimates put at upwards of 2,000 launches per Starship, and each of these benefits should help them accomplish that goal. Even still, a lot of repeated use and time can do a lot to a fully reusable ship. So, can SpaceX continue to use a single Starship? or will they eventually have to replace each and every ship as time goes on? Let us know in the comments below, and make sure to check back for more videos on SpaceX, Starship, and space as a whole.